I'm going to call the meeting to order. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, so the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, February 27, 2023. So this is a hybrid meeting. And so we try to give extra effort to making sure that people who are online have a, a, an opportunity to participate. Uh, in terms of roll call, I believe Bob Powell is not a regular member. So Don, I'm gonna seat you because most likely action will be on the regulation amendment tonight, as opposed to, I know that there's almost certainly gonna be a continuation of the public hearing on Cards Mill Road. So that being said, and you, you were seated at that one. Uh, any changes to the agenda? None. Uh, the minutes of January 23rd, 2023. Any corrections? Anybody? Thanks, Josh. Josh. I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes as presented. I'll move to, or I'll second, sir. Just second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Rich, are you in favor or? Yes, Rich is in favor. So we have one member uh, uh, coming into the meeting via Zoom. Anything under the audience of citizens? It's not already on our agenda. Okay. Under unfinished business, we have item 6 1, Carol Briggs and others, filming amendment application to repeal section 52.7.5, event slash wedding venue facilities and parts of sections 9, 21.2.3, and 62.5. One second, please. Yes. I'm Bob and Rick both here. Do you need to see Rick? Then I don't need to see you. We'll see Bob Powell. Oh, I have that. Yeah, Bob. Okay. Welcome, Bob. Bob Powell. Thank you, Rick. Appreciate it. Sorry I'm late. Don, we'll unseat you. Thank you for your patience. I appreciate that. <laughs> So that being said, uh, the applicant here, Ms. Briggs, would you like to talk to this? I would. Thank you, yes. Ms. Carol Briggs, 61 Johnson Road. Um, you should have gotten um, email correspondence from me, from Mark, and from um, Mike Mavaldi um, relating to the Reg Amendment um, over the past. And what we wanted to do was go over um, the information that we presented briefly. Um, the, um, the standard of review we talked about at the last meeting, and I, in the email I sent you, um, I shared with you our concerns from the, the, the prior reg amendment application and the contrast um, between how that one was approved and how this one um, is being viewed. And I, I just know um, that- Just for clarification, so the prior regulation amendment was defeated, not approved. No, let me clarify, thank you. When the wedding application, wedding event hall application uh, for special permits was approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission um, at their meeting in the summer of 20, 2022, um, if you read through the minutes, um, there's no reference to the plan of conservation and development. There is no reference to lessening congestion on the streets. There is no less, there's no reference to securing safety from fire, panic, flood, or other dangers. There's no reference to it promoting the health and welfare. Um, there is, however, a reference that says that, um, uh, and I quote that um, is, uh, this is open for discussion and agrees that the restriction would limit future business. Um, and then in the actual vote to approve it, um, NASA suggested that the time be changed for Sunday. He believes the number of events could be increased and would be positive for business in the town. Um, that's not the standard for regs being approved in the state statute. Business and economics are not supposed to be considered. And that is why we have brought this, because what we're saying is let's get us back in conformity with what should be done in this town. We live in RA districts 
most of us. Some live in commercial districts because our town is, is, is so old that quite frankly, houses were built and then commercial districts laid over them. But in our area, it's an RA zone. It's rural agriculture, <coughs> residential. And we want to keep it that way and it should be kept that way. And so what I, I also submitted as part of this, and, and Mr. Lamonte is here, he's an appraiser. Um, he's somewhere up there. There he is. Um, and um, you should have received a copy of his appraisal. We are submitting it for both the public hearing for this red amendment and for the uh, special permit opposition to the special permit application. And what I wanted to do is have Mr. Lamonte. The, the, the audio is on, right? Okay. John, you need to mute yourself unless you're talking. Okay. About that. Uh, yes, good evening. Uh, my name is uh, John oh, Lamonte. John, John, you need to mute yourself until you're going to talk. Hang on one sec. Um, uh, what we wanted to do is um, have John. Uh, good, good evening. John. <laughs> Ms. Briggs, let me step in. Yeah. I didn't cover this and I apologize. So our procedure for public hearings is if somebody wants to speak, they raise their hand and they can't speak until they're recognized by the chair. Um, and then and only then if they identify themselves and uh, give their address, then they're recognized and they have, they have the ability to speak. Right now you have somebody else speaking. So you'll have to wait until this speaker is done, okay? So just so everybody is aware of that, just for the record. Thank you. Um, what I wanted to do was just introduce Mr. Lamonte, who is a, a licensed appraiser in the state of Connecticut, and he can give his background. And what I would ask him to do is um, discuss the, the concerns he has raised when you introduce a commercial business such as a, a wedding event um a, a hall or facility into a residential rural residential um district if you could mr lamonte just give a, a bit of a summary of your background your credentials and then if you could discuss the um the concerns that you raised in your appraisal report regarding the impact to a residential neighborhood of these types of projects in such a neighborhood okay are you all set Thank you. For now. Thank you. Okay. Who would like to speak next then? Mr. Lamonte? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Could you identify okay. yourself and, and your address? Yes. Please? My name is John Lamonte, 39 West Wine Terrace, Middletown, Connecticut. I'm a professional certified real estate appraiser. Also, I'm a real estate broker. And uh, since 1978, I've been doing real estate since 1976. I'm also a developer, I'm a manager of properties. I do market studies, consultations, and uh, we appraise all type of properties. So uh, Torne Carol Briggs uh, contacted my office to do an appraisal, uh, which is predicated on the before value and after value meaning you know if uh, you're going to approve the special permit to build a commercial facility in a rural a residential you know rural residential agriculture uh, area so we did a, an appraisal of uh, three particular properties number nine scalise drive and uh, number four uh, baker hill road and uh, number 82 uh, carl's mill road which is directly across the 79 Carl's Mill Road. So those three appraisals were done, predicated on nothing going on in the area. So you have the values unencumbered, you know, by any special permit, any anything going, you know, adversely based on the residential zone. So then after, we, once we did that, we established the base, those three properties have been value. You know, the appraisers are in, in uh, on record, you know, uh, Turner Briggs, she got a copy of the appraisals. We sent a PDF file, which I, I believe you guys have. So after we establish our base, you know, we we'll look, we'll look over what impact, uh, if you're gonna prove a special permit is gonna have uh, on these homes and, by extension, you know, additional homes in, in the neighbor and, and, and behind that. 
So the the bottom line, you know, from from my perspective as a professional uh, real estate appraiser and real estate broker is that if you're going to introduce anything commercial within a rural agricultural residential zone, in effect, you created a, a mixed use commercial zone. Either you call it special permit or you call it zone change or variance, whatever you want to call it. The, the bottom line is going to be a mixed use commercial and residential area if a special permit is going to be approved. Now, uh, by, by doing so, uh, obviously the residential area is going to be impacted and is going to be impacted negatively. It's no compatibility, compatibility of uses, you know, between a residential a neighbor with, with a bedding, uh, wedding banquet facility. Uh, although, you know, you, you're asking for 25 acres minimum, you know, lot size, but you're going to have increased traffic. You're going to have uh, noise, you know, uh, in the area. Uh, you're going to have additional uh, concerns about safety, you know, because these events are going to take place most likely in the evening or on weekends. And uh, so the effect is going to be negative in terms of the residential component. Uh, if you want to compare, look at it this way. If you are a home buyer and you're looking to buy a home and I'm going to show you homes and you want to be in a rural area and you want to pay X, Y, Z in terms of price. And I'm going to show you something in Columbia, Connecticut, where it's very private, five, six acres, three acres, nine acres of uh, site whatever that may be, and uh, you're going to invest, you know, uh, considerably amount of money, you're going to do so based on, on location. Location is fundamental in terms of uh, value. And uh, now, if, if I'm going to show you the same thing, and I'm going to say to you, perhaps, you know, the Columbia Zoning and Planning, they might uh, give a special permit to an applicant or sometime in the future, I guarantee you that buyer is not going to be uh, very inclined, you know, to buy over there in that particular area, unless you're going to give them one big issue, which is going to be a discount on, on the value of the property on the price. You cannot change the location. You cannot change the appeal. You can change nothing. The only component you can affect is pricing. I seen that in my 47 years, you know, doing real estate. Price is what is going to make it more appealing to, to anyone. If you can appeal it to somebody that wants to buy in a rural location, and that's the main, the main purpose is the location. That's the main component. So it is no, I mean, you don't have to be a specialist to figure it out that if you're going to approve a special permit in a rural residential agriculture area, and a lot of these homes are upscale homes on top of that you're going to have a negative impact. Now, how much negative, we can debate that. It could be 25%, it could be 20 it could be 30%. You could debate that, but the, the bottom line in terms of effect is going to be negative because you create a, a mixed-use commercial area. So you're going to have a commercial and residential mixed-use by virtue of, of accepting a special application or zone change or whatever, whatever you want to call it. So my conclusion is that uh, you you you're going to have an impact somewhere in the thirty percent you know range. Do you mind if I ask Mr. Lamonte to address something? No, that'd be fine. Thank you, Mr. Lamonte. Um, yes. Um, I understand your appraisal was related to the, the these three properties near the 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 other app the application that's the subject of the next public hearing. But yes. the opinions that you express do they apply? Um, to one of these facilities being cited anywhere in the town of Columbia? Well, no, no I, I cannot specifically say anywhere in the town of Columbia, but within... Oh, I, uh, course, in, in, a, in a rural, in a, in a rural it, residential agricultural it, Yes, if we reflect on a rural residential area, the effect is going to be the same. It's going to be negative. Yes. I don't have any other questions. 
for Mr. Lamonte, unless you had anything you wanted to. Yeah, I, I do have a question of, of your mm -hmm. um, witness. What's the scientific basis for his underlying right. assumption of these numerical citations? Mr. Lamonte, yeah. if I may, um, as an appraiser, what standards do you follow when you're reaching uh, reaching your opinions regarding uh, valuation? <clears throat> well, the the first thing, as I mentioned before, you needed to establish a base. So the base was done based on the, this property is being an encumbered. So nothing is going on, nothing is perceived to go on. So the, the value is predicated on the highest and best use, which, which we did. Now, uh, the chairman asked me, what, what is the scientific? It's no scientific method in appraising, uh, uh, you know, if, if, if I might say that. Uh, number one, you know, if you read my report, as stated in my report, Number one consideration is location. You, you want to have to recognize the location is fundamental in, in property values. Now, if you're going to change a particular area from residential to mixed use commercial, because by effect of approving a special permit is not different than making its own change, you want to allow a commercial development to take place in a rural, residential, agriculture zone. Lamonte, you made that point to us. Right. We, so, all right. So I let me tell you. Let me, let me tell you also how, how we do it. Okay. You if you, if could you please listen to me for a second? Yes. Instead of using the word scientific, I probably should have used the word objective. What objective criteria? that's commonly used in the appraisal business, do you use to make the assertions of 15, 25, and 30% changes? It's called comparison. It's comparison uh, approach. In other words, you compare properties with somewhat similar properties. Now, in a case where you have, a, you know, damages, if you will, the damages uh, apply to reduction of value, uh, you you can do typically what we refer to a sales p a i r e d. So you take a sales that took place an encumbered, you know, with nothing going on, and then obviously the same property sold, you know, later after some commercial um, input was introduced into the neighbor. Either something of the sort of uh, other properties which they sold before and after a commercial was introduced in, in a particular market. As I stated in my report, uh, your particular area is more or less unique. Uh, I cannot find anything comparable to, to having a house like uh, Mr. Stamp and Four Bakery. It's 9.3 acres of land and it's surrounded by the 10 miles river. If I'm gonna have to be comparing with something I gotta find something similar. I couldn't find it, you know, in another location with the same, you know, features with the same, uh, you know, uh, uh, appeal, if you will. So I, I use my experience, my knowledge as a professional, 47 years in this business of selling real estate, appraising real estate, being a developer of real estate, we, we built 64 condominium units in Marlborough, Connecticut, not too far from you. It's called Sachem Village, where we have the same opposition, you know, people that they don't want it because, you know, you know, for whatever reasons. So my experience is based on doing it, you know, from a standpoint of a broker or appraiser or a developer. And I couldn't find anything similar to your location where I could do a per sale analysis or consideration. So I base my opinion on, on, on number one, location. If you want to approve a special permit, you, you want to impact location. Location is the main consideration in property values, especially single family homes, and particularly in an area which is considered. Uh, very rural, like uh, Columbia, like uh, that particular area on Carl's Mill Road and surrounding streets. Uh, all buyers, they bought it there for that specific reason. They, they want to 
a, a very, very, you know, secluded location. They wanted something, you know, there was tranquility. They don't want something where uh, someday somebody can have a, a wedding banquet, you know, in, in the neighborhood. So it, that alone will affect value very considerably. Now we can debate how much of a value, a 20% or 25 or 30, but as I stated before, uh, Mr. Chairman, if you are a home buyer and, and you wanna buy a house and I'm gonna show you around and I'm gonna tell you, this is what's going to happen here and here, you are not buying in uh, Columbia, uh, Carl's Mill Road, unless you get a very deep discount. You, you will not consider to buy because your location is the primary consideration. And then it comes the house, then it comes number of bedrooms, and then it comes number of bathrooms, garages, whatever you want. It. But location is the driving component of where the value is gonna fall. So without being scientific or without being objective, I can tell you without any doubt that you're gonna affect in a negative way, value of homes and Carl's Mill Road and you know, by extension in, in the neighborhood. Yes, may I so, ask him? Um, just, I just want to clarify. So by your own admission, this is not an objective perspective from you. Um, not scientific and not objective. It's simply an opinion and you don't have any facts to back it up. Oh, no. oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes, I do. That is, it's he an opinion, opinion objective. He doesn't have I'll a bias. I recognize you when I recognize well, you and you will not be speaking until then. Uh, so, objective sir, is a cognitive uh, bias. Carol, he never Carol, did. stop it. No, stop sure. it. You I'll have ask you to leave the meeting. I will biased. ask you to leave the meeting if you keep acting out. You've accused him of being no. biased. I, I, I will ask you, if you interrupt this meeting one more time, I will have but the state trooper come to you. You will not talk when you're not recognized. Do you understand that? And you're not going to accuse my expert okay. of being biased. You're done. I ask you to leave the meeting. No, I'm not leaving the okay. meeting. I'm going to put this meeting in recess. Um, I'm, I'm going to um, call the state trooper and have you removed if you don't voluntarily leave. I'm not room. leaving, Mr. Nasser. Okay. You and accused him of bias. I don't think he accused anybody of anything. He said he's not objective. He didn't That's a bias. By his own admission. And I'm not going to debate this with you. You're not recognized, and you have to follow the rules of this meeting, or you're out. I'll give you another chance if you agree to only speak when you're recognized. If you want to abide by that, great. Otherwise, I will put this meeting in abeyance and I'll either have you arrested for not for trespassing because I'm asking, I was asking you to leave the meeting and you're refusing and, to do and, it. And, I will not I will accept your that. behavior. I will agree to that, but you need to clarify when you meet, use the term objective, that it's not that you're accusing him of bias. I'm not going to debate this with you right now. You're missing the point. You can't just speak in anytime you want to. You have to be recognized. That is the rule. And I was trying to make a point with, with the, the, um, the person who was recognized by the chair. So, Ms. Mr. Lamonte, you said yes. specifically that this was not an objective criteria by your own words in your testimony just a few minutes ago, and that you had no way, in my understanding, based on your testimony, to justify this opinion of the difference in value. You, you um, one of the subject properties, you said you couldn't find anything comparable. So I asked you for objective information on where you got your perspective from. Uh, and I'm all years. Okay, no, uh, I, I think with, you misunderstood, uh, Mr. Chairman, with all that respect. What I'm referring to is paired sales, P-A-I-R-E-D. Paired sales, meaning it's the same property, same home, sold, let's say in 2019. And then the, this special uh, permit is approved or is, it's in, in, you know, in the application to be approved, the same house will sell. And let's say it's a difference in price. Then I can establish that, you know, without being an encumbered, sold the X, Y, Z, and then in the after sold for less money or same money or whatever the case may be. So I was referring to peer sales. I'm very objective on my, on my findings, on my doing as an appraiser. I, I have done the reports in the before. And so I don't know if you, if you had a chance to look it over. So we established the value, that's the value. And uh, in the after, 
because I couldn't find any pair sales in similar locations. See, that, that's the key. The location is the key. Then what, what I had to do was, based on my opinion as a professional, I, I, I know the location is going to be impacted. So if uh, objectively, I'm going to look at this property before without any encumbrance you know, going on. And I'm going to look at the same property either in the after or knowing there is a special application you know, on the table. So objectively, looking at that, I concluded there is going to be an impact. And the impact is negative. Could you now, provide evidence of the underlying information that you use for that objective criteria? That's what I've been asking you for. As yeah. an expert, a self-proclaimed expert, uh, could you provide us some evidence of that? And yes. I have not heard that to this point. Yes, it's in the report. Can I ask you, did you, did you read the report? Can I ask you that? I was expecting to review any, any pertinent information with you tonight. Okay, so it's in the report, yes. But we, uh, we, talk about, we talk about extensively in the report, yes. Uh, let, let me give you, can I give you an example also of some, something else very similar to this? Uh, not too long ago, a few, maybe three months ago, we did the same similar thing in North Haven. They proposed to build an high school in a very residential area. Same thing like in Colombia. It's on the Ridge Road in uh, North Haven. And uh, so they, they were looking for a special application, same thing. So my testimony was that uh, by doing so, the high school will impact value. We did the same thing, exactly what I, what I just uh, highlighted to you and the commission. And, uh, and we won, we, we won the case. And uh, so this thing went on for eight, nine months, but we won on the basis of what I just told you. There were no impairs, pay sales in that we can find. It was a unique location, very much similar to, to the one we're talking about. Uh, this location was next to the uh, Sleeping Giant Park in Hamden and North Haven on the town line. Upscale homes, the same thing. And if the, the commission did recognize that yes, it's nothing scientific, it's nothing very objective, but it is a common sense, you know, uh, market di dynamic market trajectory. If you introduce a commercial use in a residential area and some of the area is upscale, you're gonna have, you create a, essentially a mixed use commercial and residential uh, zone. So if you look over the report, all, all of that is there. And uh, I back it up what I, what I just told you with the data and uh, with the facts and uh, uh, you know, uh, conclusions. Is there any way that I can get you to cite specific instances with the underlying objective data? May I assist Mr. Lamonti with the information? Yes, that you may. Thank you. Mr. Lamonte. Yes. It, it might help. I, the chairman is 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 referring to a, a, what I would maybe colloquially call a, a, a math exercise that you engaged in, which isn't what your opinion testimony is. Could you explain what the USPAP standards are that you applied? You used USPAP, right? Yes, correct. Could you could you explain, and actually, first question, you've been an expert witness in state and federal court, right? Yes. And, and is your testimony there based on opinion testimony? Uh, yes. And, and an appraiser is always giving opinion testimony, right? Yes. You're, you're, you're taking factual information and then applying your logic and reason and reaching an opinion, not necessarily, as I said, a math exercise, but there is your expertise that you're applying to it. Is that right? Correct, yes, 100%. And, and when you're, and under the USPAP standards, how, what, what are the, 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 the requirements that you must engage in in order to reach the opinions in any appraisal that you perform? And, and a, assuming that you use those in this appraisal as well. 
It, well, we did exactly what you just highlighted. We, we established the market value of those three properties. Uh, I refer to as before, meaning, you know, without any anything that uh, wouldn't, uh, you know, uh, affect, you know, the, the marketability that will affect the value. And so we establish the value based on the, the highest and best use. And so you have those reports. Now, in, in the after, if you will, I'm referring to as after. So to recognize that uh, if you want to introduce a commercial use in a strictly residential area, you're going to have an impact. That's the after value conclusion. And the effect is going to be negative. I've mentioned it many times already. You can debate on the, on the percentage, if you will, but the, the effect is negative in my opinion, as a professional. Uh, yeah, Ed. My question is, is everything here is based on opinion. So how does this stand against anything? That's a good question. Can I just follow up really quickly to sure. it too? So I understand where his testimony is coming from with this, but one of, one of the struggles that I think a lot of us have had is the understanding that within RA zones, there are special permitted commercial activities now. And I'm not just talking about Columbia, but in other areas as well. So I'm just trying to round this out for, my, for myself with Mr. Lamonte's comments. Are you, Mr. Lamonte, are you saying that there's no comparable, even closely comparable commercial activity within an RA zone that you were able to find in order to come up to your, to come to your, your particular conclusions about the, the effect on property value? Uh, specifically, what, what, are you, what are you referring to? Well, there's a say commercial activities through the special application permit process. But they, they are, you talk, are you talking about Columbia? I'm talking about anywhere. Did you have any comparable? No, 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 no. no. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, we got to define, okay, the market area that we, uh, um, to is that particular area on uh, Carl's Mill Road and the extended neighborhood. Uh, I cannot comment on uh, any area where it's a special permit application going on. I mean, that's that's not what we did. So I can't comment on that. You, you specifically, you're going to have to look at, at a particular market. So this particular market, in my opinion, is going to be impacted, and the impact is going to be negative. Now, uh, the, the, the number one is location. I, I mean, if you're going to introduce a commercial uh, use in a strictly residential area, uh, obviously it's not compatible. It's not. Now, how much of a, of a compatibility is between a single family home and, and a uh, wedding banquet facility? It's, that's, it's not a debate. It's, we have another member that has a question of you, Mr. Lamonte. Mr. Lamonte, Tom Correa, just with all due respect, uh, I've been doing real estate as long as you've been doing appraisals 1976. And I did appraisals in addition to selling and, and listing uh, real estate. I did appraisals from 1976 until 1989. And when you, you probably realized they split the license, wanted appraisals to be licensed differently than the real estate brokers. Yes. Uh, and I worked out of the Stonington West Silly area. Um, did you, by chance, take a look at the Jonathan Edwards winery wedding venue place in North Stonington? Let me no. just give you an idea. Jonathan no. Edwards is a, is a winery as a winery and a wedding venue that's been in existence for almost 25 years. If anybody wants to look on their phone and look at the pictures of the Jonathan Edwards. Uh, location, the roads are very similar to down where, where we're talking about and, and, and uh, on, on, on the other one. And you can see the small roads and the prices of homes in North Stonington in the last two years alone have gone almost uh, up almost 25%. That's not just unique to um, North Stonington. North Stonington has the same population, very much so, 5,200 people as we do here in Columbia. It's very much the, you know, the farming community, and, and, and I, I just don't see 
your 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 uh, your, 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 your reductions of between twenty one percent and thirty one percent has no basis. You you just don't have any comparable sales. And I know it's difficult to anticipate what's going to happen. <laughs> Nobody here has a crystal ball, I don't think. But based on what I've seen in this market over the last three or four years, these types of things add to it. And I know the people in North Stonington love Jonathan Edwards. And, and I've known a number of young couples who've gotten married. It's a beautiful spot on a small country road, very similar to what we have in, here in Columbia, if anybody's familiar with that area. Located on the top of a knoll, they've got a 90 degree turn right down the road from it um, that goes on to Hangman Hill. So I know where you know that area is. Um, I, I just don't see any value to what you're doing. Yeah. You've looked at all the houses and you've made an assumption that the price is going to go down up to 30%. Um, uh, can I can I can I debate uh, what you just said? First of all, Stone and has nothing to do with Colombia. That's a different market. With all the respect, you, you can't compare. Without doing it, actually, what we did, you, you cannot compare that. And uh, you can't come to any conclusion either. Could I ask um, you the courtesy? I, 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 understand, I understand what you're trying to do, OK? I, I do. Mr. Lamonte, Mr. Lamonte yes. we've let you go on for a very long time. I would respectfully ask you anything that you want to testify on from this point forward. Could it be new material, not just a rehash of what you've already no. said? I, respectfully. Yeah. Respecting everybody's time, we're all ears, but but you still haven't answered my question about objective criteria that you used to come up with those numbers. We do have another member who has a question, Rich Napolitano. Uh, yes, in in all you're talking, you're you're referring to this area as strictly residential. Actually, it's residential agriculture, so it's kind of a already multi-use area, and agricultural is a business, so. Granted, it's not the same commercial everybody refers to, but referring to it as strictly residential, I think, yes, you could have more of an impact because a farm could come in there and it not be the right type farm, and that could hurt property values too. You know, if they come in there and bring a hog farm in, people have misconceptions about, you know, that a pig farm or a hog farm. So referring to as a strictly residential, I think, is a mischaracterization of the area itself. I think one clarification on that. Can I, can I, can I answer you? Uh, well, I also, we had another question from our town planner, John Gustafson. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm happy to wait until all the commissioners are, are done. I just had a, okay. a question of clarification for the, for the witness. Okay, Mr. Lamonte? Yes, I'm here. You wanted to speak? Uh, uh, you, you want to speak? No, no, you have wanted to speak, so I'm recognizing you. Oh, okay. So um, based on the characterization of uh, strictly residential, uh, uh, we didn't look at, at this as a farm uh, being as a commercial use. The purpose of this appraisal was to, to see if it's an impact based on the fact that it's a special <laughs> permit application on the table. Built a, a wedding banquet facility in, in a in a re rural residential agriculture RA zone. Now the fact that you can do uh, farms in, in the area, that's perfectly fine. You know that's not what we look at. The the purpose and the scope is to to see if it's going to be an impact based on uh, on the on the on the special permit application. Uh, to build a, a wedding banquet facility. Okay, thank you. Um, is there any other questions from members of the commission? Uh, Mr. Gostowski. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the record, John Gostowski, town planner. Um, uh, Mr. Lamonte, or through the chair. Um, yes. I just wondered what it was about commercial use, which is what I believe you said, you know, adding commercial use to a preeminently residential area. What is it about the commercial that would make it disruptive as opposed to something like say a school or a community center that might generate even higher levels of, of traffic and noise but would not be strictly commercial? I'm just curious about what it is about commercial. 
Well, commercial, uh, we, I'm referring specifically to the wedding banquet facility, which has been proposed by virtue of uh, having a special permit application. So that's what I'm referring to. Now, uh, I don't know what other commercial, you know, you, you can put it there, but specifically, my, my testimony is based on my report, as stated in my report, when you compare a, a residential, you know, neighbor by introducing a commercial component, which in this case is a wearing backband facility. So that, that's the scope of my work, you know, nothing else. So, so if I might, Mr. Chair. Um, so it's it's not commercial in general. It's a wedding venue that you would have concerns with. From a no, 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 no. It's commercial in general. But my purpose, my scope of what I did was to reflect on the on the special application to have a, a bank and banquet wedding banquet facility in that particular area. But obviously, a, a, a school is commercial. Uh, daycare is commercial. Uh, everything is going to fall under the commercial umbrella, you know, in, in that case. But what I'm saying to you is I cannot comment on a day, daycare facility because my scope was related specifically to the special application permit to, to build a wedding banquet facility in that particular area. Okay, so it's not all commercial because you're not speaking to schools, you're not speaking to daycare centers, you're not speaking to indoor riding arenas, you're not speaking to ho commercial horse operations, to elderly housing, to public utility stations, to golf courses, churches, community centers, libraries, fire stations. You're not speaking to any of those things that might be categorized as commercial, only wedding venues. That's correct. That, that was the purpose of uh, what we were hired for, to, to look into the special application and to see if it was an impact by, by giving an, uh, you know, a, an approval of the special application to build a wedding banquet. Question from the commissioner, Mr. Tabor. Can I address Mr. Lamonti directly? Sure. Mr. Lamonti, I heard you say several times in this specific location. So your yes. information is based upon that specific location? The, the information about... about a uh, wedding the, banquet in that specific the, location. Yeah, yeah, 79 uh, Carl's Mill Road, yes. You realize that this application or the regulation that we're talking about isn't just about Carl's Mill Road. It's a town-wide regulation. Yes, I'm aware of that. But again, so, so, so what you're testifying is, so again, what you're testifying is that it doesn't work on Carl's Mill Road. You're not testifying that it doesn't work in general. No, of course not. My, the purpose of our appraisal is specifically for that particular location. And, you know, you know by extension, I mean, you know, you have a... I ask you to, to limit your testimony. I don't think we're covering any new ground here. Um, and I appreciate the clarification, Mr. Tabor. Um, Ms. Briggs? If, if I may, I had asked Mr. Lamonte at the beginning if his appraisal relating to this project also applied to the other residential you, agricultural you, districts in the town. Did you hear his answer when I asked him? Did you hear the answer he gave? Did you hear the answer he gave me? Yes, and, I, and I, I'm, asking, I'm asking you if you heard what he said initially, because I, I don't think he was quite following your question initially, and you didn't let him fish, because he started to say by extension, and then he got cut off. So Mr. Lamonte, just going back yes. to what Mr. Tabor asked you, as we said, we're talking about the reg amendment in whole, and I understand your appraisal is relating to this property, but we yes. also talked about the fact that this would be permitted throughout the town. Yeah, is your opinion yes. that there is generally a negative impact if this were introduced in any residential agricultural district within the town of Columbia? In my opinion, yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. You're welcome. Let's move on from this witness. I appreciate your time and effort. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, so I just have a note. I um, I did receive uh, four documents before this meeting from, I believe, from Mr. Lamonte, but they were in an email from Ms. Briggs and uh, relating to those three properties on Carter Mill, Baker Hill, and Scalise. So if I was understanding Ms. Briggs correctly, you were going to submit those as part of the record for both of these? Yeah, yes, for, for exactly the okay. reason we just discussed. Right, so um, 
I was not aware of that because I, I thought that your email was mostly pertaining to the um, Arsenal special permit application. <coughs> um, so just I have an email. You know, it was sent Friday. Support for reg amendment, which mm -hmm. supports uniformity. Please attach see the attached report from John Lamonte. Mm -hmm. Well, I so oh, you know I think I I think I had emailed John Guskowski about that because um, John had forwarded me that um, email and I saw that there was a reference to um, an attachment and I I had emailed John to. That one we had, I did not submit the three separate appraisals, just Mr. Lamonti's okay. main report. So it was, it was just, was that the one that said before and after or something in the, mm -hmm. okay. So, so that document is not currently part of your packet, but if we do, uh, I think we'll have to close the public hearing tonight, but is that something I could send? Well, we we can, if we send it after we close the public hearing, Consider it. Right. Could I could I run down the stairs and send it? Um, if you introduce it in the meeting tonight, it can be included, but we have to take okay. time to evaluate it. Here, why don't you do that? Okay. So then, then we can review it after, but we will receive it during the meeting. So is it the the 150 page document? Yes, I, I apologize, but I thought you had already received it. So I, that's why I otherwise I would have had why I was asking for objective well, information. That's what hmm. my apologies. I sent it in on Friday. So I could have gone through. I have tabs and could have gone through all of that detail with it. But some yeah, combination of us have breaks, just one one thing. Because it addressed specifics to cards middle road, it was, it was an easy yeah. situation to have happened because. I sent it twice. I, I get it, but but frankly speaking, if it addresses specifics to Cardinal Road, it really isn't something we can consider as part of this. He does talk to the general characters and the negative I got impacts you, but you of can these. see why this kind of thing I, would happen. I, well, and I was very flexible in this part of this public hearing with references to the Cardinal Road application, just out of a sense of being expansive as to what we want to consider and more so than we have been in the past in an effort to just be kind but i've repeatedly asked mr lamonti for objective information that i have not received i asked repeatedly and i have heard none tonight well, nothing he, he did keep referring to his report we thought you had it i sent it friday i, so I the, don't know why i didn't get mr distributed. mr chair i i'm trying to what the report was received and it was forwarded is it but it is the is the concern that it just ended up in the wrong folder instead of both folders? I'm not sure I understand. Basically. So, so the the email um, that Carol that Ms., the, the attorney Briggs is referencing um, was received on on Friday afternoon um, and was forwarded. I uh, received received by by my office um, as well as the, the, the town manager and attorney uh, Roberts, the town council. Um, it what did not reference a specific application. The, the subject line was actually exceptionally long such that I couldn't save it to a computer because the subject line was too long. But um, it was forwarded to um, the applicants. It was forwarded to Josh, uh, the, the board clerk for inclusion in the public hearing record. So it was received, it was forwarded and it, it did end up in the public record. I think the question is, you know, if picture the, the public hearing record as a, as a, as a folder, you know, one for, for Cards Mill Road, one for a text amendment, is the concern, there was no question it was received, is the question that it wasn't placed into both folders instead of basically just the, the one folder? Well, I, I didn't uh, have a, have a uh, I, Mr. Roberts, uh, our town attorney, I got like, it was attached to the emails about the specific application, it was referenced but not attached to the email about the text amendment. So, so I, I didn't review any appraisal or anything as part of prepping for this meeting. And I would always want any pertinent data uh, for, for a specific topic to come in the packet as opposed to an attached um, document with a forwarded email. I just, it's too disparate. It's just not uh, an efficient way for us to keep track of the information flowing in. I would want it part of the packet, whether it's printed or not. You know, 150 page document. Um, they want us to do it probably 
I don't know if they're. Um, uh, Mr. Oman, if you could mute yes. yourself so that we don't have to listen while you're not testifying. I'm sorry, can you repeat it? Can you mute that? Yeah. Oh, I, asked okay. you mute, I asked you to mute yourself yes. so that we don't listen to you speaking while we're having a meeting going on. Yes. Okay, thank you. So we, we, I don't think any of us have seen the appraisals. And I did ask Mr. Lamonte repeatedly for objective information, even when we have large amounts of, of uh, printed data. If you would when we have large amounts of printed data that are submitted to us, we always ask the applicant to summarize the data so they can make a presentation to us that is concise and, and digestible. Um, and I haven't heard anything like that this evening to this point. Um, so, no, we don't go through every technical point on every application in the meeting. Um, so I would have asked for some sort of summary so we could understand the basis for his conclusion. And I have not heard anything that helps me understand it to this point. Uh, I did have somebody in the audience on the to you, Bob. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, Rick. Can you hear me, Rick? Yeah, I had somebody from the audience. I'll get to you, Bob. Thanks. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to comment that I think that there are many professions and real estate appraisals may be one of them that the testimony relies on the expertise of the witness, of the person testifying. I work with children's mental health, and when I'm testifying, I, don't, I can't walk in with objective um, material for you. you the, the people would be relying on my professional experience. And I think that's what's going on here. He has, this is a, a gentleman who has long, long years of experience in the field. And well, we have two members of the that, commission. That's not what an appraiser does. Okay. An appraiser takes the data on sold properties, sometimes properties around the market, sometimes properties that's uh, under contract, and evaluates. The value so that that value goes to the mortgage company to determine if people can get the mortgage so it's not based on a professional opinion of the data it's a professional I mean, I, opinion based, based on based, data. based on the data in other words if you get a house that sold for two hundred thousand and a similar house is sold for 250 and then the property you're trying to buy is under contract for 300 but it's got an in-ground pool and seven acres of land and there are fat factors of which would justify the 300,000 and that's how that's determined. In other words, if I have a two car garage as opposed to one car garage, there's a $2,500 adjustment. A pool is usually about $7,000 for an adjustment. Square footage is based on a dollar amount depending on the age of the house. So those are all built in. And, and, and can I please finish without- I um, raised my hand and put it down. Um, it's just distracting until I'm done. Okay. Uh, Bob, Bob had a question, if you don't mind. I'm not going to but, uh, So that's how that's done. Yours is a different profession. God well, bless you, but it's a different, it's a different you, don't have, you don't have specific data to work with. There's too much else involved. Uh, Bob? Yes, Rick. Um, I, I did not receive the 150 some odd page document. And I was wondering why we didn't get that. Okay. Uh, well, we're working on it. Are you referring to the? Um, if it's the document we've been discussing, I just emailed it to the commission and posted it. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, th I think we need this, this information way before the meeting so that we can go through the 150 pages. I mean, it's not fair to submit something to us at the last minute and expect that to be taken into consideration. Understood. Understood. Okay. Um, when was it submitted? I believe it was submitted to our town planner, John, on Friday, and he tried to send it to me on su yesterday, but I think that attachment on that particular email did not get through, and that was the source of the confusion. That's unreasonable. Though. It's unreasonable. Mm -hmm. uh, not with the weekend factor. Now. Okay. It was it was received after three o'clock on on Friday afternoon. Yes, Mr. Roberts. I think you know, given where we are in the chronology on this application and the fact that you can't 
Yeah, you know, you're receiving hundreds of pages of documents now, and you can't extend because you've you've reached the limit on the statutory except, except or extensions. Perhaps you could ask the applicant if they would be willing to withdraw the text amendment, resubmit it so that you get the full package, you know, waive the fee just so that it can be done properly. And you yeah. know, Thank you. Yes, sir. No, no comment. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we were at the limit statutorily in, in terms of how long we can go with this repeal uh, amendment. So she'd be faced with withdrawing her application and resubmitting it. And, right. and if it isn't withdrawn, we have to act on the information that we have. Gotcha. I, I proposed it. I just would request that you waive the fee. Yeah, I, I, I in the interest of fairness, yeah, I'd be willing to do that. Um, I, I think it I really beg you not to dump hundreds of pages of data on us just before a, a public hearing, so we have enough time to review a large, large volume document. This was done at the request of actually Attorney Briard. He said we should get an expert witness. We're, so we're, I'm, we, attorney, it takes weeks to do an appraisal. I mean, it it. He's been working on this for three weeks. You can see it's dated. I, he's an attorney on another topic. But the, this, this the is he I'm spoke to the about the, this amendment. He, he spoke to this at the last public hearing. He said they don't have any experts regarding those positions. So we went out and hired one. We spent thousands of dollars, and he spent over three weeks. That's why we actually needed this time. We just got this last week. So, so we are where we are, right? We need to more time. Right. That's is that, is that your isn't. proposal? That's what I suggested. Yeah. Okay, because we, what Walt said, we are where we are. Yeah. If that's what the applicant wants, I'm okay with that. But we can't get into this, what we're getting into with yeah. all this. Yeah. Okay, yeah. To just do it. So let's, yeah. let's make a decision. I, to last. I assume it's going to be on the commission's part that we will waive the fee. Yes, yes. I agree. Okay. Yeah, in the interest of fairness. Yes. So if you would withdraw the application and want to resubmit it so we can take into account all of the data that you've have collected that would be ideal. I think you need to resubmit it under the new application, and we will waive the fee on that. We will do that. We 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 withdraw our reg amendment application now. Okay. Do we need that in writing, Rich, or is this verbal testimony? So you can follow up in writing. Okay. I'll well, send an email right now. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Briggs. Okay. So as of this point, this public hearing is no longer. Uh, a public hearing because we have a withdrawn application. So we need to make an action. Um, we no. don't. We need a no. No. Okay. Um, so we don't need to make a motion. We, we don't. I don't think we even have a public hearing to close right now. It comes to a stop. Mm -hmm. Yes. No. Okay. Right Next. <laughs> okay. Well, while we're all catching your breath, I, I would just follow up and say that even even appraisers are experts, just like traffic engineers are experts. You know, civil engineers are experts, so you know they do give opinions. The question that you have to go through is not whether it's an opinion and say forget about it. The question is whether you know there are other experts who provide different information, you know, that contradict an expert's opinion, or whether there are you know shortcomings in the analysis that leads to the opinion. But just because something is an opinion doesn't mean you ignore it. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else from anyone? Okay, we're going to move on. Can I add one thing? Um, when he does what I did, I have quiet in the audience, please. What I don't understand about this, Mr. I'm, Lundy's I'm asking for quiet in the audience, please. I'm insisting on quiet in the audience, please, before you leave. The data that we will receive, these streets are all um, in the general proximity of Cards Mill. And I don't think that's what this application is about. This is a town wide. They, they'll have an opportunity to address that in the okay, next well, application. Can I just clarify that? Yeah. Mr. Barrier. I, 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 I appreciate not doing this tonight. Um, so we, we don't have a public hearing going on oh, this sorry. at this okay. point. So. Yeah. Um, next up, 
is item 6.2, Big House LLC special permit application for a vending wedding facility at 79 Cards Mill Road, map 20, lot 16, per sections 21, 22.3, 52.7.5, and 62.5. So we're, this is a public hearing that is going to be continued. Um, we've had a lot of testimony come in on it, and we would need time to digest all of the information. We've had a lot of email testimony, and it, it's my understanding that the applicant is fine with, uh, uh, with continuing this. Um, uh, to our town planner, uh, do we need to make a motion to continue the public hearing? Um, you, you would. I think the other the, the open question is, and so we just to be clear, we received um, a letter uh, from the applicant's representation, uh, Attorney Briard, who is here, um, noting the significant volume of information, testimony, photography that was submitted on Friday afternoon and the okay. inadequate time to properly review, process, and respond to those items um, requested an extension of the public hearing into March. Um, and, and if I'm misstating something, uh, Attorney Briard can correct me when I'm done. Um, yes, I, I guess yeah. the, the um, question for you and the commission is that you are, you know, I think the, that due deference should be given to the applicant to have more time to respond. However, this is a public hearing, and if there is something that someone in the audience wishes to say that was not submitted in written email testimony, um, that would add to the numbers of things that that attorney Briard and his clients will want to respond to. It might be good to get that stuff out here as well before Thank continuing. You. Yes, uh, yes. So we will take any testimony that. Uh, I would appreciate not uh, rehashing of a written communication, and I don't mean to demean that, demean it by stipulating it, uh, describing it that way. But if, if you send in written communication, and if you anything new that we need to bring into the public hearing, we will tonight, and we will be continuing the public hearing. And I'll recognize Mr. Boulard. <clears throat> Yes. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I think I'm uh, finally unmuted. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chair and members of the commission and uh, Mr. Gasowski. I did make a written request uh, on behalf of the applicant um, as a result of receiving, you know, literally hundreds of pages on a Friday afternoon before the, the Monday public hearing. So um, obviously it's impossible to uh, prepare uh, a reasonable uh, uh, presentation uh, considering the time limits. Um, and I, I would note that there will uh, probably be some uh, information that will be generated as a result of the materials that we <clears throat> um, received and that we will uh, endeavor to get those materials to the commission uh, as soon as we can, but I can assure you that it won't be three o'clock on a Friday afternoon before the next public hearing, which I think is March 13th. So uh, we would at a minimum try to give you several days at a minimum and hopefully more. We do anticipate, um, for lack of a better word, uh, uh, some rebuttal evidence to um, the appraisal tonight, which really had nothing to do with this uh, amendment, but had everything to do with Cards Mill. So, um, we will deal with that appropriately, and I would subpoena uh, Mr. Uh, Delamonte to come back uh, to testify at the uh, March 13th hearing if he intends to offer that or if the uh, uh, people that have hired him intend to offer that uh, as testimony uh, in, in connection with the application of Cards Mill. So um, I, I don't have, I mean, if anybody has anything else to add, I mean, there's been many, many letters Everybody's had many opportunities to address the commission. If there's anything new other than the appraisals and the photographs, certainly, you know, we uh, could address that if we knew about it. Other than that, uh, we're prepared to uh, ask the commission formally, and I'm, I'm doing that now to continue this public hearing, and you can be assured that we'll be um, uh, ready uh, at the next public hearing. I know we're, we're, we'll be running up at a deadline, so we will have I think a presentation that will be crisp and to the point. And um, I think that giving us the additional time 
uh, will assist in that endeavor. So uh, thank you for your time this evening and um, thank you for any consideration that you give to uh, continuing this uh, public hearing and we'll, we'll get our stuff to you as soon as we can. Thank you. Anything else from the public that you would like to get on the record this evening? We will be continuing the public hearing to March 14th. At March 14th at 7 p.m. I can see a hand up over here. Hi, Heather Connors, Agent Cardsville Road. Um, I just wanted to clarify if uh, Attorney Briard says he's going to be providing with rebuttal evidence at the next hearing. So, you know, we don't know when that information is going to come about. Um, a lot of us have, you know, worked with some experts in the last couple of weeks in rebuttal to what occurred at the last public hearing. So I'm just concerned that if, again, like this is just going to be continuing, like there's this new information, it takes time for experts to like look into and research and come up with their opinions, which is why you guys didn't get the report any earlier than you did for the appraisal. I'm just concerned that just being a public person with a lot of expertise in this matter, like, you know, I would have to reach out to an expert myself to double check or to verify. So it does that make sense? I'm sorry, I'm trying to like, no, just understand. think this through, like, you know, well, again, it's like- It's a, a valid question, uh, but, you know, if this is gonna be a battle um, of expert versus expert, that's one consideration. But in this case, um, there are challenges to his client's application and he'd like to respond to those challenges. Um, absent new challenges at that time, I would think that they can respond and we can have verbal testimony about it. I would hope that that would be sufficient. But at the end, we want to be fair. We want to give people a chance to be heard. That's where, so I can't anticipate your question because I don't know what the responses are going to be. Sure. And then, you know, like I said, I just would like to point out, like we weren't intentionally withholding any information. It just took- I don't think anyone said that. It's yeah. the nature of an application. Yeah, so yeah. sorry. I just thought if we would have no, given it to you sooner, we had it, we just didn't. I appreciate bringing your concerns to light. Um, but it, the way this normally happens is if people are challenging uh, an application, uh, we give the applicant a chance to address those challenges, and I can't anticipate what the next step would be after that. Thank you. Anything from anyone else? You, sir, you would? No, I'll find it. Okay. All right. Then I will. I think, I think you have Rick. I think you have Ian on the screen. Uh, and uh, she got her hand up. I don't know if it's still up or it's down or what. I don't see a hand up for the end. No, it was just an observation made by this error. I'm interested in how this extension or this this is going to affect the calendar for the limit on this public hearing. Uh, John and I were talking about this a while back, and we did not when we first opened this up. Um, John, so no, I, be I believe um, we have at as of this moment um 54 days to play with so 54 days so you are given um in addition to the the standard 65 35 65 time frame you're given an uh, a, a, up to 65 additional days of extensions to be applied to any phase of the review process um holding this uh meeting burned i believe 11 days into our 65 day free floating uh, extension pool. So we have that 54 days with which to basically wrap up the, the public hearing. I think this is actually the 14th day of extensions, but that's 51. So 51. Okay. We have time. So that would take us so to a number of days um, as long as we have sufficient time. So our next meeting is March 14th. March, March 13th. March 13th. Thank so I'll make a motion that we continue this public hearing to March 13th, 2023, 7 p.m. Seconded by Wall. All those in favor? Okay, there we are. Uh, we're going to, there's no new business, John. Okay. Uh, no, more, no more new business at this point. Okay. Um, we're going to pass over regulation revisions and subdivision. subdivision. We haven't had a subdivision committee meeting. We will notice it through 
uh, our our agenda and whatever mechanism is appropriate to stay legally compliant. No, they, 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 they uh, we don't have they extend it. Yeah, but they extend it. They haven't officially. Do you have somebody else? Um, Mr. Okay, there we go. Mr. Lamonti was still unmuted. Uh, anything under communication and reports? I I, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Yes. So um, just to, to go back, there, there was actually two sections under regulation revisions. Um, yes. The, the first one or the, that you noted was subdivision regulations, which has not met. I wanted to bring to your attention um, the section three revisions, which um, is probably ancient history at this point, but um, Paula Stahl had, had brought forth um, you told me Mr. Lamonte, you're still Lamonte. unmuted. Yes, I'm here. Could you please unmute uh, yourself? Okay. So um, Paula Stahl had proposed um, some zoning revisions to section three um, regarding um, basically the, the, the treatment of structures as a monolith as opposed to separating primary and, and um, accessory structures as far as their um, permitting path um, that was received and scheduled for a public hearing uh, last it was the, the public hearing was supposed to be last April or May but um, it was basically withdrawn or, or sort of tabled at last year's March meeting um, and I wanted the opportunity to sort of revisit that and put it back on a public hearing path with this commission how about if we wait till our next meeting and review in detail what's proposed, and then we'll set a time for a public hearing at that point. That's fine. So this is this is in your meeting packets um, in today's meeting. It's page, um, for those of you, it's page 19 of the PDF that Josh sent, but um, it, it basically is dated um, February 14th, 2022 at the top called section three zoning permits and certificates of zoning compliance those are the those are the two pages that i would like to revisit with the commission um at, at your convenience john are you are you asking us to revisit it with you after you support it or that you yes. were handed by fall okay. um i i support it it was it would it's actually made the the the, the original proposal was meant to um address sort of a recurring problem in the land use office, which is yeah. that some very, very minor additions like the placement of um, small, you know, propane tanks, um, small, you know, ground mounted satellite dishes, very, very small appurtenances had to go through a full zoning permit, um, which was a separate process and an additional fee and an additional state surcharge. Um, and and the, the um, attempt was to carve out a couple of very small accessory structures to not consider them subject to full zoning permits that would have a separate application and a separate fee and a separate state surcharge, but instead be basically just building permits with a zoning sign off. So it would it's to, to carve off to make a permitting a little bit easier, a little less expensive for these very small appurtenances um, and to basically speed things along in the zoning office. Um, yeah, those are the two, two separate sheets that thank Josh provided. Yeah. I totally agree. We need to revisit this. It's a good idea. Let, let's but, review it for the next meeting yeah. and uh, review review what was in the packet um, about Section 3. And then thank you. schedule it as of the next meeting. And I'm glad you brought it up, John. Thank you. Uh, can, anything under communication reports? I don't, didn't see anything. I think this entire meeting has been miscommunication on reports. <laughs> no. no. Um, anything from the commission? I'll second that. Any, anything? I'll make a motion. Yep. I do. Yeah. I got a quick question. Uh, Rich, Rich has a question before we. Uh, is, is there some way we can uh, visit this in the future about? You know, it's happened a couple of times where we get documents, large amounts of documents right before a meeting. I kind of set a time frame, 48 hours, at least something. I mean, because you could technically push a meeting so long that you run out of time on it, you know, in a public hearing. I don't know what the legality is on that, but in fairness, you know, you can keep dumping it when you get to the end of your window. Excuse me? 
We ask that things come in by midday on Thursday so that we can get them out in the packet for a Monday meeting. And yes. when it's a large volume, even that's almost not enough time to review it. I mean, because if you get dumped in it, you know, you're on your last cycle on either side of a public hearing, you can push it to the point where they run out of time, you know? Um, Regardless of what we'll, side you're on. We'll work on that. Uh, Something to think know, about. Um, you know, anything could come in any time up to the start of a public hearing and it's part of the, can be yeah. part of the record. We, it's it just it. the way the law works. Correct me, John, if I'm wrong. No, that's that's absolutely correct. Um, I, you know, there are things that we can do to ease. I mean, it depends on your your from your comfort, level of comfort with technology. Um, I did put in, and I think I think um, Josh forwarded a link to a OneDrive shared file. So as things come in, they can be immediately deposited in there, um, and so people can review that. And in fact, the public can too at any point during the review process. But as long as a hearing is open, people are, you know, technically free to submit testimony in writing, you know, in person, by email, smoke signals, you know, whatever. Um, it's it's part of the public hearing. Okay. So there's a motion on the table to adjourn. Please. 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 Please.